Hi, everybody. Let me get myself situated. Um, we are, let's see. Okay. We are, first of all, my hat today. It has flowers all over it. It's like textured and I don't know. I don't know how it goes. Cause there's like the tag is back here, but then this is like poofy. You know, maybe it tilts, whatever. It's old, it's vintage, it's cute. We're going with it. Um, so we are on topic two, section three, where we did factoring last lesson where we had to find the two parentheses and then we did zero product property and we solved for X. Now we're gonna talk about um, something we've already talked about, interval, intervals, positive and negative. That basically means a positive interval is where is my line, where's my graph above the X axis? A negative interval means where is it below the X axis? Okay, so um, the zeros of a function. I want you to remember that the zeros of a function, that vocab word means that it is um, the solutions when you solve it, when you factor it. Um, it's usually two numbers, right? Um, I can do like the x-intercepts. It's also the roots. Okay, so th that is what zeros of a function mean. So I've got this trinomial here and I haven't graphed it yet. X squared minus two X minus three. So I actually wanna solve it, you know, and figure out Okay, obviously three is from three and one. Um, X is here. You gotta figure out your signs. When you add these two, you want a negative two, which means that the larger number, this negative three X needs to be negative because negative three plus one is negative two. So when I solve X equals positive three, X equals negative one. Let's put them in the order from smallest to biggest. This is the place where my parabola is gonna hit the x-axis. Now I wanna go through and I wanna know, well, at negative one, it actually hits the x-axis, but before that, the left side of negative one, is it above or below? Is it positive or negative? So that means that I wanna know when it's less than negative one, when, when all the points less than negative one is my parabola going to be in the negative under the x-axis or the positive? Okay, so this is x is less than negative one. That means the section of the graph that's less than negative one. Uh, down here, I didn't want to point it out yet, but I will. This is actually the graph of this function. So less than negative one, I want to know is the parabola below it or is there a parabola above it? Now, usually you're not going to get a graph, but for the first one, I decided to give you the graph. So what I need to do is I need to um, and by the way, the uh, instructions are over here on the left, questions and tips. Find the zeros. I did. They're negative one and positive three. Choose a number. Choose a number that's below negative one. How about negative two? What if x equaled negative two? Will my parabola be negative or positive? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in negative two into my function. minus two times negative two, minus three. Four plus four minus three, right? Eight minus three is five. Positive five. So positive above the x-axis. When my Point like at negative two, for example, where is my parabola? Oh, my parabola is positive because when I plugged in negative two into my function, I got a positive number as a result. That means that the graph is positive when it's smaller than negative one. Smaller than negative one is negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, all over here. Okay, next. 
in between negative one and three, between. Is my parabola going to be positive or negative? Now listen, I know I can see the picture of it, but I'm not always going to be given a graph. And if I want to know what's the shape of this graph, then this is a method that I would use. In between negative one and positive three, how about one? At one, right here. Now again, I'm lucky to have the graph. So one squared minus two times one minus three. One minus two minus three is negative four. That means it's negative. That means it's below the x-axis. Look, and it is. So I've got positive when it's less than negative one. In between negative one and three is negative. So it, we see that it dips down. Now, when it's bigger than three, over here, all these points over here, are they positive interval, negative interval? I have to pick a number greater than three. How about four? What if x equals four? Okay, four squared minus two times four minus three. 16 minus eight minus three, uh, five. That's positive. That means that when my parabola is to the right hand side of three, it's gonna be in the positive interval, positive interval upward above the x-axis. And I really don't have room, but above x-axis. Okay, check your work using the graph. I did, so here's my, here's how I write it. From over here, negative infinity to negative one. Remember, it's a parenthesis in the intervals because at negative one, zero is not positive and zero is not negative. Zero is neutral, okay? And I only care, identify the intervals on which the function is positive. Well, it was positive in these two sections right here. So it was from negative infinity to negative one. Then again, from three union, this is interval notation, three to infinity, okay? So this means this is when x was less than negative one, and this is when x was greater than three. But I use the interval notation with the parentheses. Also, I use a parentheses at three because at three, I'm at zero on my you know, x, x axis, which means that the um, number is not positive, it's not negative, zero is neutral, okay? All right, so that's the long version. And you were given a graph. You're not gonna be given a graph again. Okay, let's see this next one. Identify the intervals on which the function y equals x squared minus four x minus 20 is negative. I only care where it's negative, but I've got to pick numbers. So, factored. Uh, 21 is made from seven and three but I want it to be a negative four X. So that means that the seven has to be negative because negative seven plus, negative seven X plus three X is negative four X. That means that I got X equals positive seven, zero product property, and X equals negative three, zero product property. That seven and that negative three is how I chose these for my little chart. That's where I got the negative three and the seven from because I had to factor it first and find my zeros my roots. Pick a number that's less than negative three. How about, what if X is negative four? Okay. Um, negative four squared minus four times four. Oh, negative four. Watch your signs. I already, I already almost messed it up. Minus 21. 16 plus 16 minus 21. 32 minus 21, um, 11. So 11 is positive, right? That's good. Um, but I only want when it's negative. In between negative three and seven, uh, zero. Pick an easy number, guys. What if x equals zero? That's in between negative three and seven. 
zero squared minus four times zero minus 21, negative 21. It's negative, this is where it's negative. Let's just make sure at seven, above seven. How about if I chose eight? Eight squared minus four times eight minus 21. 64 minus 32 minus 21. 64 minus 32 is 32. 32 minutes, oh, there's another 11 again. Positive. So, since the question is asking me, where is it negative? I only care about right here. Okay, that's gonna be negative three and seven. And since those are both x-intercepts and they're on the x-axis and it's at zero, zero is not positive, zero is not negative, I use parentheses. This using parentheses because it's at zero on the x-axis only happens when we do intervals, positive interval, negative interval. I don't even need to graph it. Okay. All right, next thing we're gonna learn we're moving on to a, to a new topic in this lesson, is what, what if I'm given certain information and I need to know what the equation is? So I'm only told parts, like I'm told that one of the x-intercepts is this, the other x-intercept is this, and there's another point that I know this, okay? So here's the formula. It's called intercept form right here. And P and Q are my x-intercepts. Can you guys see that? So here's the steps, here's how to. I use intercept form with P and Q for my two numbers here, negative two and negative one. Then I plug in my x-intercepts for P and Q. Got it, yeah. Then plug in negative three comma 20 for x and y because I eventually need to find A, I don't know what A is. We've done this before when I was given the um, vertex and a point on the line. And then we use vertex form. Now I'm given intercepts and a point on the line. Intercept form, this is a new form right here. So I'm gonna use the same process, plug in P and Q and then plug in X and Y, okay? Notice how these are both x's right here because they're the x-intercepts. Y equals a x minus negative two, that's one of my intercepts. Oh, I need to do another parentheses. x minus negative one. There we go. Y equals a x plus two, x plus one. I'm not gonna foil. I am not going to multiply this. I am now going to plug in negative three comma 20 for x is negative three, y is 20 for x and y. So let's use another highlighter color so that you guys get. Okay. okay, ready? Y equals 20 equals. A, my x is negative three. Negative three plus two, negative three plus one. So I plugged in my x's and I plugged in my y. I'm now solving for A. A, negative one, negative two. 20 equals Negative one times negative two is two, two A. A equals 10. So now, if A is 10, I use intercept form. A, X plus two, X plus one. Intercept form. If I wanted to, I could foil this. If I wanted to, to put it into like 
standard form, okay? We're gonna do this whole process over again. So remember, here's my P and here's my Q, here's my X and here's my Y. P, Q, X, Y. All right, Y equals A, X minus three, X minus negative three, right? P and Q, P, and Q. Um, I could plug in my X and Y right now. Let's do that. Let's just plug in X and Y. Uh, one comma two. Y is two. A, one minus three, one plus three. You know how this became a plus sign, right? Two equals a negative two plus or times four. Eight. eight negative eight. Negative eight. Hold on a second. Yeah. Hold on, you guys. Hi. Okay, I'm back. Um. So, uh, it's basically negative eight a, right? A is a fraction. Divide by negative eight. A equals negative one fourth. Okay, so I'm going to write it in intercept form again. I found my A and I know my P and I know my Q. Use A, P, and Q to write intercept form equation. All right, y equals negative one fourth, x minus three, x plus three. Okay, so recap. We figured out where is the function, what, uh, where is it positive, where is it negative, over what interval. Then, intercept form, we learned something new about intercept form. It's a new way. If I'm only given the x-intercepts and then a point on the parabola, I can figure out the equation of the parabola using intercept form. All different ways for us to figure out what's the equation of a parabola. Okay? All right. We are done. Um, you guys uh, will watch this video and just take notes. And then in class, we're going to do the additional practice. Okay? All right. I'll see you guys in class tomorrow. Bye.